We're continuing our series uh, today, talking about moving from weakness to strength. I trust that we've all been enjoying that um, today. It's a, it's a little bright. Can we turn down a little bit? Um, I trust we've all been enjoying that um, these past few weeks. Uh, anybody got out of it? Anything? All right, somebody come up here and preach it for me. A few of y'all would jump up here quickly, though. Uh, some of y'all, like, have a heart attack. Do you know that one of the greatest fears in the world is public speaking? Uh, believe it or not, I don't really like to speak publicly either. Um, it's just a, a grace that's upon me for this time. I, I never enjoyed it, and, and it's truly because of the anointing that I would do so. But praise God. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, when you're there, you can just tell me, Say I am or amen or whatever the case is. I'm still turned there. I'm sorry. It's in my notes, but I want to get there as well. Hebrews chapter 11. And since I'm not there, I'll go ahead. Okay, I'm there now. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Praise God. Y'all ready for the word today? Yes. All right. Y'all ain't on vacation now. You all here with me? Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2 says, for by it, by what? By faith. By faith. Come on, say it again. Say what? By faith. by faith. Very good. By faith, for by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Let me stop here and say this too, that if the elders obtain a good testimony by their faith, you can obtain a good testimony by your faith as well. Amen, Amen somebody. And I know some of y'all can church it with the best of them, so you know about, you know, uh, without a test, there ain't no testimony. Huh? And God can take you from your mess huh? and take that mess and turn it into a message. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Praise the Lord. Huh? And all those different things, right? But, I mean, there's some truth to it. I know it's kind of churchy and all that. But, uh, I mean, listen, thank God that God don't just leave you in the test. Come on, but, but through, come on, you go through that test. You can come out on the other side with a testimony. Right? And God is not the one necessarily that's testing you, but we all, we, listen, through this life, we will deal with challenges. No matter how much faith you got. Right? Again, Pastor Mark Hanger says it this way. That, uh, he said the Lord tell it, told it to him this way. He said, your faith may not prevent all mountains, but your faith can move every mountain. Now, let me say this as well, because sometimes we, we get, if y'all don't know by now, I really don't like religion all that much. Amen. Personally, I'm just more about a relationship. I, I don't like church politics and, and all those different things. Um, you know, but I will say this, is that, um, uh, I will say this, that uh, even though I'm not, I lost my train of thought here. But even though I'm not all that into religion and, and, and politics, I, 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 church politics and all that, it's important that we still recognize that we, we, we got to press through and do certain things. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Sometimes people allow certain songs to dictate their doctrine. Right? And so we'll say things and we'll hear. I remember one time, this was when I was on staff at our church in St. Thomas. Just in case you don't know, we do have a church in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, that's been going for over 30 years. And um, praise the Lord. And so if you're ever there visiting in St. Thomas, we encourage you to go. It says the same name, Kingdom Life. Their website is www.kliccvi.com. And you can get their address and find ways to, to get there. Great church as well. But when I was on staff there before we started this church, which by the way, yesterday, just yesterday to the day was 16 years since we started this church here in Central Florida. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So that's a good testimony. And we've had some tests over the years. And that's a good testimony to know that we, um, we're still here. Praise God. Amen. But, um, but I remember uh, the, the secretary at the time, the office manager at the time, uh, she was listening to Christian radio, and a song came on, and it was a country song that was like, uh, Lord, don't move that mountain, just give me strength to climb. For if you move that mountain, I'll grow weaker every time. And it sounds good, and it sounds nice. And some of y'all more seasoned saints would know the, I'm climbing up. Oh, some of y'all know it. Some of y'all, oh, y'all taking me back. Pastor, don't mess with my song. On the rough side of the mountain, I'm doing my best to make it. 
I'm doing my best. Y'all know I'm doing my best. I'm do, you know, and we get all, you know, wrapped up and emotional, and, and it sounds good. Listen, and your faith may not prevent all mountains from showing up, but your faith can move every single mountain. God never said you're supposed to climb up on the rough side, huh? Because I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make it up the rough side of the mountain. I'm just, I'm just trying to make it up the rough side. I'm, I'm going up on the rough side. Lord, don't move that mountain. Huh? Just give me the strength to climb. Huh? For if you move that mountain, huh, I'll grow weaker every time. Huh? And it sounds really good and religious. But God don't like it. Because what does God want? He wants faith. I mean, come on. Jesus himself said, have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. In verse, in verse 3, it says it's by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things that are invisible. And in Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus, he said, have faith in God. One translation breaks it down and says, have the faith of God. In other words, Jesus was telling his disciples, he was telling you, he was telling Bishop Big Lips, he was telling everybody, hey, listen, you can do the same thing that we did. The same faith that we use to create the heavens and the earth, the same way you can create your world in front of you. And a lot of times we want to complain about how things look and what I'm dealing with and how, you know, and my, my, my wife isn't acting right and, and, and this isn't happening and my finances, my, my money's acting funny and all kinds of different things. When really, if you would just take inventory on what you've been saying, because if we can have what we say, I mean, if, if, if Jesus wasn't just being... Um, irresponsible with his words. When he says, whosoever shall have whatsoever. Because a lot of people want a change of scenery. In other words, they want things to look different, but they're not willing to change the words of their mouth. If by faith, is what the Bible says, by faith we what? We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And if you're not allowing your world to be framed by God's word, something else, some other people, challenges and situations is framing your world. And it's not enough to stay silent because you lose by default if you just stay silent. Are y'all hearing me? And so a lot of times we do, you know, a lot of religious things that we, we, we might think and somebody probably still got some problems with what I said, but I'm going to prove it to you. Let's, let's look at, uh, ooh, where are we? Man, Exodus, Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter, where is it, Lord? Yeah, Exodus chapter 14. And I love this because, it, it, again, it shows us, because even as we're going to get into like Hebrews 11, verse 32, 33, 34, and we may not even need to turn there because for weeks we've been teaching on this, right? And we, we you know, by faith we understand. Uh, again, Hebrews 11, it's obvious that God is trying to get something across to us that this thing is done by faith. This life that you live is by faith. By faith. The just shall live, what? By? Faith. By faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Without what? Faith. Without faith. By faith they obtain a testimony. By what? Faith. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. By what? By faith. By faith, Abraham did this. By what? Faith. By faith, Sarah did this. By what? Faith. By faith. By faith, Rahab, a prostitute, for people who don't understand uh, that or speak a different language, a uh, ho. I, I, like, I feel like preaching today and say, uh, touch your neighbor and say, you ought to have some whole faith. Come on, ho. Touch, have, come on, touch your neighbor and have whole faith. In other words, if a hoe can do it, if a harlot can do it, if a prostitute can do it, then by God, you can do it too. Y'all good? Pastor said hoe in church. Yeah, because some of y'all need to shock. Right. Pastor Lynette says, some of y'all say it out of church. Y'all should join me in some of your group texts. Let me see what y'all text into each other. (laughs) 
No, don't join me. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I really don't. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it at all. The amount of LMFAOOOS and all kinds. Oh, I want to talk about anybody today? A bunch of STFU and and oh 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 Exodus, why y'all get so quiet all of a sudden? I'm not ta- I'm talking about people that's watching this. I'm not talking about y'all. Relax. Pass it all up in my text messages. People online, not y'all, right? <laughs> y'all should see some of your faces. Just smile. Nobody gonna notice you. Just... <laughs> Uh, Exodus 14. Now remember this. God chose Moses, who was imperfect. Uh, later on, we're going to be talking about Gideon again. He was imperfect, saw himself as the weakest in the clan, but God still chose to use him, right? And so here in Exodus chapter 14, um, the, you know, after all these different things, all these different miracles, you know, prior to this, God had said to, to Moses, hey, what's that in your hand? And Moses said, well, this is a rod. He said, stretch it out. And he stretched it out, and God showed him that I'm going to use what you have. Do you know that when God calls you to do something, he don't necessarily need you to, to gather um, all kinds of other stuff and talents that you don't have? He's like, hey, whatever you have, I can use that. You with all your imperfections, I can use you. I just need somebody that's willing to be used. He's not looking for perfect people. A lot of people are looking for the perfect church. This kingdom life is not the perfect church. Kenneth and Lynette Estrada are not the perfect people. The people that serve at this church are not perfect. You ain't perfect. Even if you found the perfect church, as soon as you got there, that perfect church will now be imperfect because you're imperfect. But God, still so full of mercy and so full of grace, come on, he still chooses to use you. Even when you may feel weak, he can take you from a place of weakness and move you to a place of strength with your imperfect self. So anyways, here they are, Moses and the Israelites, they finally, you know, Pharaoh finally lets them go and all these different things and they show up at the Red Sea. And and, and so so now it says in verse... uh, In verse 10, it says, when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. So they did this. Then they did something wrong. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word? That we told you in Egypt, verse 12, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. You you, you know so many Christians still have the same mentality? Get mad at something the, the, the pastor's preaching that the Lord said to tell them. Well, pastor, you said that I should have faith and I should do this and do that. But see, I... I was all good when I wasn't serving. I was all good. You talk about make yourself friendly and get to know people. I was all good by myself. I was all good when I wasn't giving and when I wasn't doing this. And, and, you know, and, and so, you know, you should have left me there. I was good when I was drinking a six-pack a day and, you know, uh, lighting it up and all those. I was good. I didn't have as much problems. Just let me go and die. It says it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And then it says in verse um, 13, it says, And Moses said to the people, and this is a great, I mean, I could just hear the organs playing right now. Then Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Thank you. Um, From the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. 
and the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And God didn't like his message. Hated it. And verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, what you talking about, Willis? He said, why are you crying out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. He said, but lift up your rod. The, 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 the same rod, you know, you know, when I approached you and I called you, and you, you lift up your rod. You, you do, stop crying out to me. God, help me. And God, I need you to do this. And God, no, 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 no. Take, take that, that anointing that I've already placed on the inside of you. That calling that I have upon your life. That authority that I've given you in the name of Jesus. Come on, the word of God that I've already given to you. Come on, you, you take your place. You stretch out your hand. You stretch out your rod. And... Uh, over the sea and divide it. Who, so, 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 English scholars, who's he saying to do it? You. So you stretch out your rod. You stretch it out over the sea, and not just that. And you divide, huh? Oh no, brother, uh, that's the Lord because God is sovereign. Oh, religious people don't like this now. Oh, we're kicking over some sacred cows right now. Because God had already given Moses the authority. He had already given him the ability. And he says, you divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So when we're thinking, and I know, I know it's messing with some, uh, some people's you know, doctrines here. With stuff, and you know, because I, I like that going up on the rough side of the mountain. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna have challenges, yes. but you deal with it by faith. by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Not by your emotions, not by how good everything seems, not when everything's lined up, line upon line, but by faith, and God rarely comes to someone and deals with them from their strength, so to speak. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. remember a few weeks ago, we, we talked about even uh, Paul, how he says that I would much rather boast in my infirmities, or in other words, my weaknesses or my inability to produce results, because when I am weak, when I recognize that I can't do this thing in my own strength, that's when the strength of Jesus, that's when his grace is made available and his strength becomes perfect in my life. And we got too many people that are trying to live life just by how things are, just by how people treat you, just by how people love on you, just by, 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 by how things happen, and if this person is doing this, and if the music is the right way, and if this is this way, and, and all these different things. No, listen, you still do it by faith. If I didn't pastor by faith, most Sundays I would not be here. I, I love your faces, don't get me wrong. I just don't always feel like seeing it. I don't even always like the pastor, what he has to say. <gasps> Is that possible? Yes, yeah, possible. You think I always like my own message? I'm my worst critic. Even when somebody says, oh, good word, pastor. It's like, yeah, that's the thing to say. That's, that's like, that's saying, that's a lot of people's greeting of goodbye, pastor. Yeah. Now, now watch, people are going to stop saying it now, like. Yeah. Like when I'm at the door, good word, pastor. That's, that's your way of saying good, have a good week, pastor. <laughs> no, I know it's not true. But a lot of times because we all have different insecurities that we have to deal with. I'm just being transparent with you and, and letting you know. You know, a lot of times we could be like, no, but don't stop saying it because it is encouraging to me. Because a lot of times, again, I'm my worst critic. So I could feel like, man, I, I could have said this. Or, you know, man, it, this, this could have been here. Or, uh, you know. Or a lot of times it's not easy watching your faces, you know, especially when I'm not seeing faces, but I'm seeing like foreheads and, and the top of your head because of, you know, you're down tick or whatever the case is. Oh, <laughs> some of you just came up like, oh. <laughs> I 
Are y'all here with me? So again, in, in, in um, Hebrews 11, in verse 33 in the Passion, it reads this way. It says, through faith's power, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled them into reality. And as we said before, if their faith was able to hold fast and fasten onto the promise of God and pull it into reality, your faith can and will do the same thing. Just got to stick with it. This is not some kind of magic potion. You just rub something on and, you know, hey, boom, faith, yes, here we go. Automatic, let it happen. Microwave. Let's get it going right now. This, now faith, because the Lord just said now faith, so I want it now. No, no, no. Now faith. Faith believes, even when you can't see. Come on. How, how many times have somebody come in the healing line, and I believe that God wants to heal you instantly. I, I don't believe that you have to stay sick for so long and, oh, I praise the Lord, I'm just in faith believing. No, 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 no. We serve a good God who has already placed his healing power on the inside of you. And I, I don't think that he's trying to withhold it from you. Sometimes we just have to work on our ability to receive. Because we're thinking it's by works. Well, I'm not praying enough. Or, you know, I, 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 didn't, you know, I, I didn't do this enough. Or, or I'm not good enough and, and, and all these different things. And so it's like God is trying to punish you. No, no, no. If you just have more of a conscience of God on the inside of you and what he placed on the inside of you, you can receive things a whole lot faster. That depression that you've been dealing with, if you be more God conscious of the fact that he's on the inside of you, you can receive healing from that depression a whole lot faster. What we need is more consciousness of God, of him being on the inside of us. Greater is he that is in us. Not, not some God that's far off, off in heaven, you know, in la-la land type of thing, and he's sleeping and he can't hear you. No, greater, the greater one is on the inside of you now. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Greater is he that is in us than your, your challenges you have with your kids. Greater is he that is in us than the challenges you may have in your marriage. Greater is he that is in us than the challenges you may be dealing with in your business. Greater is he that is in us than your temptations, than the, than the addictions to salt, to sugar, to junk, to drugs, to alcohol. To pain, to anger. Come on, he's greater. He's greater. He's what? He's greater. And their faith was able to fasten onto the promises and bring it into reality. Let's skip, out, let's skip to verse um, 34. It says, uh, you know, and they were able to put out the raging fire, the power of the raging fire, and cause many to escape certain death by the sword. Although weak, so they were weak. Although weak, their faith, their what? Faith. Their faith imparted power to them to make them strong. Faith sparked courage within them, and they became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from another realm into battle array. And if their faith did this, your faith can do it as well. Let me start to close uh, in, um, in uh, just to start to close. Don't get too excited. In Judges chapter 6. So you're like, Pastor, already, <laughs> Judges chapter 6, because this is where we want to get to today, but obviously I can't spend too much time because some of y'all were pulling me in different places. Judges chapter 6, and um, uh, let me go over these points while you turn there. Again, we've been saying this for weeks now. Number one, regardless of how weak you may feel, God speaks to the strength in you, right? Again, remember where he, um, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon? And called him a mighty man of valor. And Gideon, his view of himself and how he felt, here he is in the wine press threshing wheat, which gives you minimal results. It does not give you maximum results. Fear um, crippled him so much that he was unwilling to do this out in the open, which would bring, give him maximum results because of what the Midianites would do for the past six years. Right? And so it crippled him. It, it limited his ability to do um, to, to have more. And so, um, again, remember that he's a faith God and he calls those things that do not exist as though they did, right? Number two, we said this, that faith speaks in agreement with what God says about you. 
In other words, how, 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 do you, how do you come into agreement with what God says about you? Well, one of the best ways is to see yourself the way that God sees you. And what we find in the New Testament is that God sees you in Christ. Yes. Sees you in Christ. You know, some years ago, um, I, for some reason, I just decided to look up the Greek word for in. I just, and I never heard anybody else teach about that. Because I was studying about, you know, in Christ. And uh, because Brother Hagin said this, Kenneth Hagin Sr., he said this. He says, one way that you can study the word of God and one of the best ways is, of course, he said you should spend most of your time in the New Testament. The Old Testament were written, the Bible says, as examples for us. Yes. Right? So we're not doing away with the Old Testament as far as, we're not saying don't ever read it. It's just that most of your time should be spent in the New Testament because those were letters that were written to the churches, or we could say this way, written to us. In this dispensation, what's called the dispensation of grace. You all here with me? So I myself, even though I read through the whole Bible, I still spend most of my studies in the New Testament. And that means not even the Gospels. I still read the Gospels, but most of it is still in those letters that were written to the churches. Because those are letters that are written to us. You all with me? Okay, good. So... But he said this, he says, one way that you can study the Bible is everywhere that it says in Christ or through him or in him or by whom, he said, underline it, circle it, that's how God sees you. Meditate on that and study it. And that changed my life because I grew up as a pastor's kid and I just did not feel righteous. I'm talking about growing up all through high school. You know, because church people said all kinds of things to me and, and everything. And I wasn't a bad kid. I mean, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't do a whole lot of bad stuff. I did some bad stuff, but not a whole lot of bad stuff. I, I, you know, I, I remained a virgin until I got married. That, not that I didn't have any opportunities. Yeah. I had plenty of opportunities. And I'd like to tell you that it's because I, I really wanted to honor God, and that was part of it. But I really thought my dad would kill me. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I did it, the girl was going to get pregnant. I, that's, that's just how I thought. I really... I already did. And so girls were handing me condoms in school and all kinds of different things and trying to throw themselves. It's like once they know, it's like they, there's, you know, challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and it would, I mean, I just felt like, like fresh meat. You know what I mean? Just, gosh, grab hold of yourself. Um, <laughs> but anyways, and again, I, I didn't smoke anything besides toilet paper. I did smoke toilet paper, you know, because I thought, I mean, you, you could judge me all you want. I thought it, was, thought it was cool. So I did that. Let me smoke some toilet paper. Burn my chest up big time. I said, this is how it feels. <clears throat> I ain't doing this again. <laughs> I was a little kid. Don't get any ideas, kids. Um, but as a pastor's kid... You, you, you grow up under a microscope and, of course, I mean, I'd have people coming to me and saying, you're the pastor's child, you know. You need to set an example for the other children. And I was like, that just ain't right. You know, your kids acted a mess and who said I'm supposed to set an example? Like, would not allow me to be a normal child. And I'm going to tell you, see, my parents, they weren't pastor's kids. They did the best. But since I grew up as a pastor's kid, I could kind of relate and understand. My children are normal children. We're going to raise them how we see fit. Right? We are thankful for a family of believers. That it doesn't mean that you can't correct them. We, you know, we have certain people that, that know that they can't correct them. I mean, if you see my child wa- walking across the street and cars are, are driving and not paying attention, don't say, well, <sighs> Pastor ain't going to come after me because I corrected them, because I tried to save their life. No, no, no. Of course, we're a family here. You understand what I'm saying? But there's a way that you can do things. So my kids, I, I, we do the best. We're, we fail in a lot of areas, <laughs> but we do the best that we can. And, um, and so um, how did I get here? Family, pastor's kid, all these different things. So Righteousness. So I had all these feelings because of the bombarding of thoughts, and it ain't easy being raised in church, y'all. But we're still going to do it. 
because it's still good. That's why we try to create a culture in here of embracing people with the God kind of love. We got to do it because we're not perfect. So that means then that even when somebody lets you down, you're still going to walk in love towards them. That means that even when somebody feels down and feels that you let them down, you're still going to try to work on it and deal with it uh, because the God, don't just say, well, they can stay there in their mess. No, if you know that you offended someone, you go to that person and, yeah. and deal with that. I'm trying to talk, trying to get to Gideon here. Oh, brother Gideon. But I felt like I wasn't righteous. And so this message of who we are in Christ changed my life. So I started to realize, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, Therefore he made him, talking about Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. So I started to say, wait, wait, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm not righteous by what I do, but I've been made righteous. So for so many years, I've been trying to be righteous, and I just can't seem to attain to it. I keep letting God down. and because uh, It's obvious I'm letting him down because everybody's telling me yeah, come on. that I got to be an example. Right? But then when I start to realize that I am righteous, so... I, I, I wrote it down, I meditated on it, and it changed. I was like, well, thank you, Lord, that I've been made righteous. That I, I not someday I'm going to be, but right now I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you feel like you're incomplete, well, I'm so incomplete, I need somebody in my life. No, 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 the Bible says that you are now complete in him. You don't need some man to complete you. You don't need some woman to complete you. Now, thank God, if you complete and you find somebody that's complete and he and she come together and they just bring all their completeness together and we all, we're going to be complete together, then that makes it because that relationship can never fulfill what it is that you're looking for. You can only find that in Jesus Christ. That's why there are people that are married and been married for years and they still don't feel complete because you are wanting your wife to fulfill that place. You're wanting your husband to fulfill that place and it's never going to happen because guess what? You didn't marry the perfect person either. And they didn't marry the perfect one either. So you're always going to let each other down but once you find your completeness in Christ Jesus... And if that's you and you're, well, I already married this person. Well, it's not too late to find your completeness in Christ. So your value doesn't come from that person. Your value doesn't come from your relationship. Your value is found in who God created you to be in Christ Jesus. Why do you think he came to Gideon and said, hey, you mighty man of valor? Because Gideon was not feeling mighty at this time. So God had to speak to the strength in him. And Gideon said, who, me? My, 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 my clan is the weakest, and not just that, but I'm the least of my father's tribe. Yeah. So you can't be talking to me. God knew what he was dealing with, but yet God said, hey, I'm going to speak to the strength that's on the inside of you. God will speak to the righteousness that's on, that's on the inside of you. God will speak to the prosperity that's on the inside of you. God will speak to the healing that's on the inside of you. But a lot of times we're just staying, we're, we're, we're wanting to stay in our place of weakness because it just don't look like it. Well, the things that are seen were made by things that are invisible. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. So now... Speak in agreement with God. Point number three that I want to get to is that private worship precedes public power. Private worship before public power. Private worship before public power. Private worship before public power. And where do we find that? Um, we find it here in, in Judges chapter 6. It's all right. I'll stay with this because I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Well, get it ready just in case. Thank you. He's smarter than I am. He's like, I'm still going to get it ready. Um, in Judges chapter 6, in verse 17, well, let's read from verse 15. So he said to him, 
Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you. Is, is, is God with anybody today? Yes. Can, is it possible that we can just be so um, strong on the fact that God is with us? If, if you can just get this simple truth that God is with you. He's with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God is with you. God is what? He's with you. God is with me. You ought to tell yourself that sometimes. God is with me. He said, as God is, he said, and the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, if I have now found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk to me. Do not depart from here. I pray until I come to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. And he said, I'll wait until you come back. So Gideon went and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread uh, from an ephah flour and the meat he put in a basket. He put the broth in a pot and he brought them out to him under the terebinth tree and presented them. And the angel of the Lord said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Verse 21, then the angel of the Lord put out his hand, uh, the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and the fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread, and the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Why would he say that if Gideon wasn't thinking it? Remember, he's, he's at a place of weakness. And through faith in God, we see in Hebrews 11 that he was able to move from weakness to strength. He said, peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord. And he called it, the Lord is peace. And to this day, it's still an offer of the Abyssalites. Now, um, verse 25, it says, Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar there to the Lord. Right? And build an altar to the Lord, your God, apart, on top of this rock, in the proper arrangement. And take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. Y'all okay with us reading the Bible in church, right? All right. So get in because some people don't read the Bible at home. Even though I told people read this whole chapter weeks ago. I ain't going to ask for a show of hands. But somebody show me. I'm playing. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he f f feared his father's household and the men of the city too much. Verse 27. And the, uh, the men of the city too much to do it by day. He did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, there was the altar of Baal torn down and the wooden image that was beside it cut down. And the second bull was being offered on the altar which had been built. So they said to one another, who has done this thing? And when they had inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Joash, bring out your son that he may die because he has torn down the altar of Baal and because he has cut the wooden image that was beside it. But Joash said to the all who stood by, would you plead for Baal? Would you save him? Let the, let, uh, let, those, let the one who plead for him be put to death by morning. For if he is a god, let him plead for himself because he is, uh, his altar has been torn down. Therefore, on that day he called him Jerubbabel, uh, Jerubbabel, saying, let Baal uh, plead against him because he has torn down the altar, um, torn down this altar. And then it goes on to talk about the Midianites and all these different things. Then later on we see Gideon at a place of power where all these people join him. Like, I think it was like 28,000 people. And it wasn't enough to take care of all the armies of the surrounding areas. But yet, God still said you had too much. And cut it down. And then cut it down again to the point where they had 300. Y'all know that movie 300? I mean, I know it's not accurate according to the word of God. But imagine having all, this, all these troops of people and, and God is like, no, no, no. Because y'all going to say that y'all did it. Yeah, come on. And that's the same thing. A lot of times when we, when we deal with things yeah. from just our place. Of our strength, a lot of times we think that we are the ones that did it. 
I'm the one that got this job. I'm the one that got these clients. I'm the one that sold this house. I'm the one that did this. I'm the one that did that. No, 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 no. God is like, no, no, no. Uh, you, you, uh, I want you to know that I'm the one that did it. Yeah. It's not saying that you can't do things with a lot. It's just keep your mind and your mindset where it needs to be. Yeah. God knew at this time that they had already turned away from him. Because yeah, right. here it is. These altars to a false god, to another god, is up. And so, what's the boy name? Gideon. <laughs> what's, what's that boy name? Gideon, he had to get to a place of private worship before he was ever used for public power. So what did he do? He, got, he tore down the altar. He had to get obedient. And a lot of times we have these altars in our lives. Let, let me say to you, there are no shortcuts. Because a lot of people want some public power. They want to be seen and they want to be used of God and they want to do this, but I, I want it this way. But again, God chooses. He doesn't choose the perfect. I shared with you guys. How honored I am here uh, next month. I'm, I'm getting ready to go to, um, to Tulsa to, to preach at uh, Pastor Kenneth Hagin's camp meeting. And when he called me a few months ago and asked me to, to speak at it, I just said, yes, sir. But when he got off the phone, I was so taken back to 20 years ago when I was just getting ready to set foot on the campus for the first time. And taken back to, to the Charles Capps and the and the John Osteens and the Fred Prices and the, um, you know, uh, the Lester Summerall's and the Kenneth Copeland's and all these different big men and women of faith, well-known, worldwide ministries. And Rhema is a worldwide ministry where, where, where millions of people have been impacted. Over a million copies of Brother Hagin's Believers Authority has been sold and there are Ramas all over the world and all these different things. And still, even though Brother Hagen 18 years ago passed away, still his legacy lives on. And still you have different ones that are carrying on. And, and Pastor Daniel Andede who, who's carrying it on in Ghana and, and all these different, and, and so many different ones that are doing these different things where lives have been touched. I was taken back because I know I'm not the greatest orator. I know that there are people who may be naturally better qualified. I am my own worst critic, as I told you guys. Are you all here with me? The fact that God would choose me in all my imperfections, the fact that God would choose me to be in a, on a stage in front of thousands of people, and I'm not passing a church of thousands just yet, taken back by it and when I want to talk to God you sure because I know so and so that you know they're even more studious than I am or they can speak they have better illustrations than I do but the fact that he would choose me but it didn't just all of a sudden happen I had my times of private worship when nobody else is seeing in the early mornings uh, you know Three o'clock in the morning, being woken up and praying. Studying when everybody else is out there having a good time. Dealing with hurt and heartache and, 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 and loving on people. And, and you know, I, I've, I've, I've taken my licks. You understand what I'm saying? But private worship must always precede public power. It's no shortcuts. And I'll close with this and ask you this, because I don't know about you, but I want maximum results. Yes. Come on, we're believing for the double this year and, and, and increase and restoration and all those different things. But sometimes we, we have these altars. It might not be an altar to Baal, but we have some altars in our lives that we built up that God never intended for us to, to have. And we become like some of the different churches that were mentioned about in Revelation. We've lost our first love. Or we're doing things all right. Or maybe, you know, you're that lukewarm church where Jesus 
he's, he's knocking at the door. He's knocking at your heart, and he's just wanting you to let him in. He said, you, you neither cold nor hot and, and all these different things, but you know what? Man, I can't, I can't stand that. And behold, Jesus is at the door knocking, knocking, and he just wants, he's not going to bust down the door. He just wants you to let him in. Are there any altars in your life that you've allowed to build up? Is there anything that you're holding on to, any, any sin that you're clinging to? you got to break down those idols. For some, that idol could be other people. Like you're so wrapped up in what people think about you, you're more interested in that than you are in God. For some, of, for some of our young people, I see what's going on. It's been pulling. For some of our young people, this generation, TikTok, Snapchat, all these, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I mean, I shouldn't say there's anything wrong with it. I'm not saying it's wrong to necessarily have it. Now, you a parent, you do what you, what you want. For me, I'm not ready to let my kids be all upon it yet because of all kinds of stuff that's on there. Right? But I'm saying, for some, that's an idol. When you, when you just have to go to it so much, I, I mean, come on, I, chiropractors all over the world are having issues with people with their backs because of this. How often the neck is down like this. And you find your joy in this. Not saying that you can't have it. Are y'all hearing me? For some, we've built up altars of wrong attitudes because of your hurt that you experienced in the past. And so you, you worship this hurt. Well, I did, I, I went through this, and I listen, God wants you to heal from that. For some, it's our businesses, for some, it's our finances. For some, it's your spouse. Is it possible that you can have your spouse as an altar? Anything that you put before God of more importance has just become an idol. And what God wants is he wants us, maybe for some it, it might be some challenges, some uh, addictions, whatever it is. Listen, this is not to condemn anybody. This is to give you hope. Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the word of God. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith in God. You can move from that place of weakness to a place of strength. But we got to be willing to put in the work. We got to be willing to put into work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for speaking to the hearts of your people. Lord, we're so grateful for you loving us, for your patience with us, for your tender mercies and your loving kindness towards us. that you'll help us to make the adjustments. We, we recognize our weaknesses, our inability to produce results. And we'll tap into your grace where your strength is made perfect in our lives. Thank you for speaking to the strength in us, for seeing us differently, for seeing us in Christ. Thank you for your empowerment to live the life that you've called us to live. We honor you. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. I know that um, sometimes at this time is where we, you know, give a salvation call or whatever, but I just felt impressed right when I said all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Nobody looking around because you might be in here and this is what the Lord is saying, that there's many that have allowed these altars to be built up 
different altars. It might be different for some. And he's saying, I want you to tear that altar down. I want you to tear that down. Now, it won't be done in your own strength, but there'll be an adjustment that needs to be made, an adjustment in your attitude, an adjustment in the way that you see things, an adjustment in your actions. But just by faith, as you are deciding right now to do so, just on credit, there's a blessing that's being released to those that would do so. Now, here's the thing is that sometimes people think that it's impossible for me to let go of this because it's been, it's been so long or I tried before. I keep getting, you know, this keeps happening. I keep messing up. I keep getting hurt. I, you know, this and that. But, but no, but what God is saying is that if you will learn to trust me through it all, and use your faith to stand. You'll see that things will start to shift and things will start to turn around. And even just by deciding, by, by saying, Lord, I'm going to be obedient, that it releases a blessing in your life, that there's some that's going to see some, um, for lack of a better term, unexpected money, an increase coming their way, just as a token of what of, of what God wants to do in your life, just as a token. So I know we've got to get out of here, but I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. I don't need to see who it is. I, I know that there's a few people in here. There's a, a lot of people in here that you, just on the inside, you know yourself what it is. And if you'll just decide, I, I know, I remember years ago, um, Pastor Lynette, uh, one thing that was, we were at a, a youth camp with youth and, and it was talking about all in and we were talking about, you know, what are some things that is hindering you from being all in and they had people write it down and, you know, and for her, hers was sleep. In other words, like she enjoyed sleep so much that it was affecting her ability to, to pray. Like she wouldn't get up earlier to pray or, or whatever the case is. Um, and so she was like, I'm laying sleep. And that, that doesn't mean that she just never sleeps. It's just that I'm going to lay down that. So if I got to go to bed earlier, if I got to take a nap, if I got to do different things, I'm going to, Lord, I'm willing to sacrifice my sleep to spend time with you. And so I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but you decide in your life, in your own heart, what that thing is that you're going to let go of, that you're going to sacrifice, that you're going to tear down the altar and you're going to say, Lord, I'm going to build up this altar for you and I'm going to sacrifice. My, my life is yours. My life belongs to you. And I live this way. And so, Father, we thank you. Spirit of God, as you're speaking to the hearts of your people, we thank you for that empowerment. We thank you for that change. Lord, we, we're so thankful and so grateful for your mercy that even when we don't deserve it, you still show your mercy to us. And we're so grateful for that. We thank you. Thank you for your anointing that destroys yokes. And so even strongholds that may be in people's lives, we command those to break in the name of Jesus. Devil, we command you to take your hands off of God's people. We bind that challenge. We bind that situation. We bind that stronghold now in Jesus' name. And we lose freedom. We lose healing. We lose deliverance. We lose it now in the name, which is above every other name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thank God we are free. We are free. Thank you so much. Amen. If you're in this place and you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, maybe you're watching here online, um, whether, you know, on YouTube or Facebook or if somehow you happen to get our app, maybe you're watching with a friend and you know that you need Jesus in your life, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Everybody in here, let's pray it together. And just say this, and meaning from the bottom of your heart, just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. 
I believe he died and rose from the grave for me. I receive him as my personal Lord and Savior. I declare that Jesus is Lord and that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I choose today to live for you. Help me to do so. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you happen to be watching this and you um, say that's me or maybe you're here, if you're here, there's going to be some prayer counsels here at the, at the front. We have some books that we want to give to you. But if you're watching online and you say, um, man, that was me. I just made that decision. Um, you can write a letter to us or, or um, send a message to us. And nobody sends letters anymore, really. Send a message to us. We'd love to help you. Maybe help you find a church home that you can plug into in your area. If you're in the area, we'd love to be that church home for you if you don't have a good one. Um, God bless you. I want you to know we're praying for you. And we've been expecting this. And we celebrate this life with you. Hallelujah.